everyone! Welcome to Daisy Stalls! In this video, I'll be taking you along as I customize and paint a model horse. More specifically, I'll be attempting to turn this Lake Connemara mare into a trotting hunter pony. This project was quite big and difficult, but I think the end result was pretty good, so I'm very excited to show you guys the process. All the materials I used in this video will be listed in the description box down below, now without further ado, let's head over to the craft table. So this is the base I'm working with. This girl was originally customized to be a walking hunter pony, but I gave up on her a year ago or so. So when I came back to her now, her sculpting was severely outdated, so let's make something new of her. I have already drilled two holes into the head and body, so let's start by connecting them with wire. At this point, I was very unsure about the neck position, so after making sure the neck wasn't too long or too short by comparing it to the original model, I secured it with some epoxy. And don't worry, even after the epoxy is dried, I'm still able to change the neck's position, which I ended up doing a lot. After about 5 minutes, the epoxy was cured, and I'm now going to flesh out the neck with some aluminum foil. This step is useful to get a general idea of how the neck is going to look and also so the epoxy clay will have something to grab onto. And this was the point where I realized that I did not want this pony to be walking, I wanted it to be trotting. And so this project got a lot more ambitious than I intended. So with a craft knife, I cut off all of the hooves just under the fetlock. To keep track of all the pieces, I marked both the cut end and the one remaining on the horse with the same colored marker. Then I cut even more of her legs off, and here you have an overview of all of the places that I cut. On some parts of the horse, I was able to only cut halfway through the leg to reposition it. This saved me the time and struggle of reconnecting the leg with wire, and it also makes it less likely to shift out of place in the future. But some of the legs still need to be connected with wire, so I drill into both ends of those pieces with a handheld drill. My hand was really starting to cramp when I was drilling into the smaller loose pieces. Now I can connect the legs with wire. Also, I ended up switching up the hooves for these two. The one on the back leg was more pointy for some reason, and that worked a lot better for the front leg. It's a little strange and unrealistic that the hooves are different shapes, but in the moment I didn't think of fixing it, so... For the legs that were only cut halfway, I cut some popsicle sticks and made some slivers with them. And then I jammed them into the slits that I cut and make small adjustments until the shape is correct. And she can already stand, that's a good sign, but we're not done yet. I decided that the right front leg needed to be bent a bit differently, so I made another slit and adjusted it like I did with the other legs. The front left leg was also not looking too natural. So after cutting and making a few slits, and adjusting and adjusting and adjusting, it was looking better. So this is what I got at this point, but I wasn't really completely satisfied, so I turned to you guys on Instagram. And again, you guys really came through and gave me a lot of good suggestions. So after a large number of tweaks, and even accidentally cutting myself, I was finally happy with her shape. I think she looks a lot more natural and working this way. I used this Loctite superglue in all of the connected joints to keep them in place. I also decided last minute I wanted new ears, so I cut them off, then I drilled into the head and also inserted wire bases for sculpting later on. And then of course, secure them with super glue. Now I'm done with repositioning, so it's time for sculpting. I'm using my two-part epoxy sculpt as usual. Using a glove, I mix equal parts A and B. 
Then I start fleshing out the neck and the small cracks in the legs. And this is what she looks like after the first pass of epoxy. This pass isn't pretty at all, but the overall shape looks good. After the first layer of epoxy has cured, it's really just a matter of building up more and more epoxy, adding muscle details, and smoothing it out. To sculpt with epoxy, I like to use a combination of both my hands and silicone sculpting tools, and I use water for smoothing it out. Then I started with the finer sculpting on the neck. It's a very good idea to have several reference pictures to know where the muscles are, etc. Sculpting necks is a pretty tricky subject. I've definitely made a lot of mistakes in the past, but I think I've improved quite a lot since my first attempt at it. DJB Studios has a good video on sculpting necks, so I will leave that in the description box below. Now I'm going to sculpt the ears. First I cover the ear base with a small blob of epoxy. Then I make a small drop shape out of a small piece of epoxy, then flatten it out like this with my silicone sculpting tool. I put it around the ear base, then try my best to smooth it down and make it look like an ear. For me, making the ears is a very delicate and frustrating process at times. But I stuck with it and eventually got a pair of ears I was very happy with. After that, I continued with sculpting on the other side of the neck. And also adding small details on the legs, for example, like this one, to make the movement of the trot more believable. Luckily, epoxy stays pliable for many hours, so I was able to save the ear. Phew. I think I did at least 5 passes of epoxy on the joints to get them to look smooth, and even so, they still have some flaws. Sculpting joints is really hard, dang it. I also had to give her a brand new shoulder, because the old one wasn't really right in comparison to the new leg. I should have shown this earlier, but I had already cut away the text she has on her belly, then I filled in the jagged edges with some more epoxy. I also decided I wanted her nostrils to be more flared, again to sell the natural and realistic look. Now I'm finally done with the sculpting on the body. And what comes after sculpting? Sanding. When you're sanding epoxy, dust will be flying everywhere, so please be safe and wear a mask. Ah no! I dropped her and her sculpted joint broke. I guess it isn't that strong after all. Okay, but luckily it's not too hard to repair. I ripped the leg off, then added more super glue, then mushed them together, and it's almost good as new. I had a short fruit snack, then I mixed up some more epoxy, applied it to her joint, and she's looking back to normal. Now that she's finally looking normal again, it's time to sculpt the braids. I roll out a snake of epoxy, then stick it to the top of her neck. With an X-Acto knife, I mark out the spacing for the braids. Then for each mark, I cut out a triangle for the braid, like on the picture you see on screen. Here, using a needle, I am starting to sculpt hair strand details on the braids. Then when that's done, it's time for the braids themselves. I would have not been able to sculpt these braids if it wasn't for Bramer Saddlery's tutorial. It really, really helped me, so if you're interested, I'll leave a link to it down below. And here the braids are finished. I'm really happy with them. I added a very small snake of epoxy where the bridal path should be, then added some texture to it with an old toothbrush. 
Using the same technique, I added a small braid for her forelock, and the braiding is done. Now it's time to sculpt the tail. I inserted a thick florist wire into the hole I've already drilled into her behind. I bent it into the general shape that I wanted, then I mixed up some two-part epoxy glue and stuck it in place. Then to bulk up the tail a bit and give the epoxy something to grab onto, I wrap some thinner wire around the thicker wire base. Then I very roughly flesh out the tail with more epoxy. Then when that layer is completely cured, I start hesitantly sculpting on that signature hunter tail. So to sculpt the tail braid, I basically rolled out a bunch of small snakes of epoxy, then apply them all the way up to the tail base. It currently looks like the bendy part of a straw, but I will fix it. After sculpting on the braid that goes vertically down the tail, it still doesn't look ideal. So what I did is, with more epoxy, I filled in each of the grooves in between the horizontal snakes of epoxy. Unfortunately, the footage of me doing it was lost, but I hope you understand anyway. When the upper braided part of the tail was done, I moved on to the part of the tail that is loose. And this is what the tail looks like after I was done sculpting. Before spraying her with primer, I wrapped her tail with saran wrap because I don't want to lose any detail on it. First I gave her just two coats and please make sure to spray in a ventilated area and wear the necessary safety equipment. After the two coats of primer, I could see a couple places where the epoxy wasn't smooth enough, so I sanded those down. I also did some minor touch-up sculpting, then repeated that process a couple more times until she looks flawless. Alright, so now she's as smooth and flawless as she's going to get, so let's start with the paints. I'm using white graduate acrylic paint mixed with the tiniest bit of brown to make it off-white, then mixing it with a bunch of water, then painting it over the entire model. It's very important to place a box or something over the model while it's drying to prevent dust from settling on the paint. When the paint was dry, I gave her two coats of Liquitex matte varnish then it's time to start with the pastels. I mix up some grey pastels, then start dusting it on the pony. I was very hesitant with the pastels at first, but after looking at a bunch of reference pictures, and also pictures of other dapple grey customs, I got a bit more confident. After the pastel layer was down, I went in with a kneaded eraser, and erased away the dapples, you could say. Once again, I turned to Instagram to hear from you guys if you had any tutorials for dapples that you found helpful. You guys directed me to DJB and NB Studios tutorials, so I have those guys to thank for this technique. It was a very, very tedious job, but I have to say I wouldn't have wanted to do it any other way, because I really like the effect it makes. I shaded her legs with black pastel and this is what she looks like after the dappling is complete. I love it! She's not perfect of course, but after all this is my first attempt at making a dapply pony. I gave her one coat of sealant, then I went in with black pastels and darkened the areas that needed to be darker. And now we're done with the pastels! It definitely took a lot longer than it did in this video. <laughs> I go in with white acrylic paint and give her socks on all of her feet that fade into the black. I also give her some small herring details on her forehead. I paint her hooves with a dark brown color. Then I use the dry brushing technique with black and other shades of brown on the hooves to add realism and depth. Aww, she's coming along so nicely! 
I mix up some brownish grayish paint and paint that on her braids. I used a dry brushing technique on the main too to add some streaks of lighter and darker colors. For the eyes, I start by filling in the sclera with white paint. Then to paint the iris, I start with some dark brown. Then I decided to put some gold metallic paint on top of the iris to give it some shine and sparkle. Then I dab on the pupil with some black paint. Repeat that on the other eye and they're finished. I changed my mind about the no marking look, so I decided to give her two socks on her back legs. This was going to be my first custom without any markings, but I just couldn't help myself. I really like the look of markings. I love the personality it gives the horse, and I also can't help but think that some customs look unfinished without them. After the markings are done, I mix brown, black, red, and white to make a hoof color. I paint that on the two back legs. Then while the paint is still wet, I paint on stripes with darker colored paints to make the hoofs look more natural. To add a small splash of color, I paint the tiniest little pink marking on her nose. Now it's finally time to paint the tail. I unwrap the tail from the saran wrap, then give it a very thin coat of white acrylic. Then I played around with a lot of different gray tones and brown tones, making it quite dark on the braid and then a bit lighter as it goes down. Then when the tail is done, she's actually finished. The only things left to do is to give her a couple good sprays of Liquitex matte varnish. Then I painted her eyes with a gloss varnish. And with that, my dapple gray hunter pony sassy is finished. I'm really happy I finally have a hunter horse, and I can't wait to put her in hunter tag. I think she's gonna look cute. Looking at her model, I can really tell why I've moved more away from Schleich and more over to Collecta and other brands, because Schleich is just really cute and not necessarily that realistic, and I think that kind of shines through on this model. So in hindsight, maybe I should have chosen another mold? I'm not sure about it. But I still think she's very cute, but I just wish she was a tiny bit more realistic. Oh, and about the name, it actually has a bit of a story behind it. So, about three weeks ago, some people living close to me had a foal, and they named her Sassy. So I thought I would kind of honor her and name my little hunter pony custom Sassy. Alright, so this video has now come to an end. I'd like to thank you all so much for watching this video all the way through and a quick reminder to follow my Instagram linked in the description to get more frequent updates. Let me know in the comments what you think about my custom and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!